Thanks, Malika. Good morning, everyone. Um, bonjour. Happy Friday, everyone. <laughs> and the mic's at the right height. Um, so for the past couple of days, we've really been talking about um, OCV supply, OCV demand, as well as yesterday, the dynamic of preventative uh, and reactive campaigns and how they actually should work in tandem with each other and actually not in opposition. So today's session is actually going to zoom in on the situation where um, we have limited supply. We're going to zoom in on a situation where there's limited supply for preventative campaigns and a tool to, to be used to allocate these doses for preventative campaigns in a transparent and informed manner. Now, as you can see on the screen, the, the goals of this today session is really for you to walk away to understand what is the work that we've been doing to actually thoughtfully think through and design the supply allocation process. Um, want a reminder of the genesis of actually where does this come from? Why are we building this framework? Describe the primary purpose and the audience. Um, walk through the governing principles that we've talked through as a subgroup. What is the moral compass of this uh, framework? What are we trying to achieve? We're going to walk through the allocation criteria design process itself. It's a, still a work in progress. Um, so I want you to keep in mind as we're presenting it, it's nothing is set in stone. It's not finished. It's it's not like the um, prioritization tool that uh, Molly was just speaking of. We're still designing this. So this is an opportunity for really for us to hear your feedback of what do you think needs to be factored in as we're we're looking at allocation of doses. It's a very key topic. It's on top of mind. We've been talking about it these past couple of days. Let us hear from you now what is important and what you think needs to be in the discussions as we're continuing to design this. And lastly, we'll probably provide an update on the timeline itself, because as I said, we're still building this and really uh, we'll incorporate the feedback that we discussed today as a group into this process. And ultimately for you to see where we're going to go with this and when, when we actually hope to be to be finalized. And lastly, I'm going. We did a workshop actually on this. Uh, I think on Monday. This week has gone by very quickly. Wednesday, we did. It. <laughs> we did a workshop actually with the actual sub team to actually walk through a potential straw person framework. And I'm going to actually ask for the feedback from the actual um, subgroup that participated in that, how they felt when they're actually running a potential framework itself. So, without further ado. So the context and the background for this framework. So just calling back exactly one year ago at the annual meeting, um, it was decided within this subgroup, uh, within this working group, that a supply allocation framework was needed for preventative campaigns. And the goal was to develop this in 2023. Now, I'm not going to reiterate what the problem is. I think we've discussed that. We know what the problem is that we're trying to address, but wanted to point out two key caveats of this framework that one, it's a, a framework for preventative campaigns. It's not going to address the allocation of doses between reactive and uh, emergency or, or uh, preventive use. So again, these are not in opposition. Um, they are to work in tandem, the two campaigns. However, the framework itself is not gonna say, use this framework to allocate between this and this, and then uh, how do you allocate within preventative campaigns? The second is this is a, not a framework to actually allocate doses within a country. This is allocating doses between countries um, for their preventative campaigns uh, that, that are going to, that are being planned. Now, on the very right side, you'll see there was a subgroup that was formed, and it was, it's been a very collaborative design process, and you'll see the different organizations there that are involved. Uh, the subgroup itself is chaired by uh, Abhishek and Amanda, and to date, we kicked off this process in May uh, of this year, and to date, we've had about five meetings, virtual meetings, where we've discussed through the different components, actually, of the framework itself. We've had various one-to-one -one sessions. We've been designing this um, collaboratively as a group. So, actually, I just wanted to take a moment it has been um, very excellent discussions. I do want to thank the subgroup for their continued engagement in this topic because it's so important. It's so critical. I think we can all agree that um, we need to, to create this framework in a very thoughtful manner that takes into account all the different perspectives and the different voices. So thank you to the sub team for their engagement so far and the, the time and effort to be in these meetings. And I'm just going to now, one key thing that we've governed our entire kind of discussion as a subgroup is that let's not reinvent the wheel. So unfortunately, we know that vaccine uh, supply challenges are not unique to OCV. So as part of the kind of design and thinking, we really wanted to leverage um, 
the vaccine allocation frameworks and mechanisms that already exist. We know that there's been one, obviously the most recent one is for the COVID-19 vaccine. Um, there is one for malaria as well, that is uh, quite recent as well, and also yellow fever, and really leveraging what did, what did they do in those frameworks? Because we don't have to reinvent everything and start from scratch. What can we leverage? Obviously, OCV needs to be, needs to be adapted to the OCV context. However, we are not going to, this is not something new, unfortunately. Also, there have been numerous discussions about prioritization um, and, and uh, the PAMI selections itself. So really leveraging the discussions already had by this working group and also the various subgroups. So really, we did not want to reinvent the wheel. So as I mentioned before, the different frameworks that we did look at was the there was a mal malaria supply allocation framework, which was designed in July, which was sorry, finalized and published in July uh, 2022. There was the COVID-19 vaccine allocation that was in September 2020, used by um, the COVAX facility. There's also um, a design making principles and SOP for yellow fever vaccine allocations that was in also November 2020, and there was a, a prioritization tool used for PCV and Rhoda uh, in 2012 when those uh, vaccines were actually quite supply constrained as well. So we looked at those frameworks and what we found actually in, in reviewing them in detail is that there are three kind of relevant components across those frameworks that all of these frameworks had defined governing principles. They had clear criteria for allocation and they had defined governance mechanisms. Those, those form the core of all those frameworks. And as we were building the OCB, we said these are the three components that we need to zero in on as we're building this framework. And we also actually looked also to the PAMI guidance and also to the prioritization tool so that we also leverage the discussions and the thought process that was already happening there. So a lot of what you'll see is not new. And this is good because you've already invested so much uh, time and energy to understand the PAMIs, to understand the prioritization. So you're not going to have to learn something new here. It's going to leverage off the work that's already been done and your knowledge of those, of those tools that exist. So. This is kind of the core of actually all the subgroup members will recognize this this uh, this slide here. Um, our discussions are framed around four main areas where we started off by looking at the purpose and goal of the framework itself. We started macro and then you dive in into the micro um, discussions. And as part of the purpose and goal, we looked at who are the main users What's the primary purpose and who are the main users? Simple as that. Um, the second discussion we had was, what are the governing principles, principles of this framework? What's our moral compass that's gonna guide us when we decide what's the actual indicators and the allocation criteria itself? Um, the third part obviously was the meat actually of the framework. What is actually gonna be the indicators? Cause that's gonna be the calculation and that's gonna be the basis of actually the calculation and how doses get divvied up. And lastly, uh, obviously the process, when and how will this be used? Who will be running the calculation? How often will it be run? Practically, how will this be used? So that's the fourth component after we've, we've figured out the, the first three parts of the discussion. Um, just to highlight to date, we're actually on number three because that's the, that, that's the crux of this whole uh, design process. So we have got to the point of number three and I'm gonna actually present kind of the outcome of the um, discussions today's, to date. So within the subgroup, um, our first discussion, as I said, was the purpose and goal. And I, I know it sounds, it would seem intuitive. What's the purpose of this framework? Was to allocate OCV supply to OCV preventative campaigns. Now, intuitive, but then oftentimes we think of periphery or secondary uses of this framework, and then we kind of get it confused of what are we trying to really uh, do here. So there was discussion in terms of, well, this could help inform global OCV supply and demand forecasts. Yes, it could provide predictability, provide visibility of how doses will be used, how it will be allocated, provide confidence in terms of the process itself. As we heard, countries have spent so much time to actually prepare their preventative campaign applications. You want to also know you're going to get doses at the end and how are you going to get those doses, especially because supply is limited. You want to know it's not first come, first serve. It's actually what is actually, how am I going to get my doses? So with a framework itself, a secondary um, benefit or, or periphery use is that it can actually provide confidence actually in the process itself, which is a, a long one, but it's a, it's a robust one as well. So um, to actually, for all stakers, to, stakeholders to have confidence in the process. Now, this has come up often in the discussions, and I'm just going to uh, just state what was there on the slide, that a key assumption of the framework itself is that there will be doses for preventative campaigns, right? Um, we're assuming that we're not looking at, as I said, the allocation between 
for reactive and preventative. This is assuming that there will be doses. And obviously this framework will be used uh, when there's doses for preventative campaigns. And one of the second and third discussions we had as a subgroup was actually to look at the governing principles. And as I said, the governing principle is the moral compass. They're the broad overarching beliefs or values that guide decision-making and sets a direction. Um, they focus on guiding philosophies, values, and long-term objectives. Now, as a subgroup, we went through and we brainstormed all different um, possible governing principles and we landed on the wheel there where there's five key governing principles. So the OCV supply allocation framework should aim to maximize health impact. It should be accountable. It should be transparent. It should be it should be based or have evidence based decision making, and it should promote equity. Right? Those seem you know very broad, very high level, and but they make sense because I think that resonates with uh, with the with you here as you say yes, that's what the this is what we're trying to achieve. Now. As you dig a little bit deeper and you think about the principles, you're going to also quickly come to the realization that there might be trade-offs within those principles themselves. There's going to be a natural tension where potentially if you're trying to maximize the um, health impact, will you achieve equity at the same time? If you give doses to one area that has the greatest need, is that equitable for another country that doesn't have a need? So you'll have a natural tension um, in the actual principles itself, but it's the recognition that there will be tension, there will be trade-offs, but they are still core principles of the framework itself. So after the discussions of the uh, purpose goal audience and then looking at the governing principles, now we've come as a subgroup to the discussions about the allocation criteria. Now, what's the difference between a governing principle and the allocation criteria? Governing principles, moral compass, allocation criteria are the specific set of rules or factors used to distribute the resources and benefit among individual groups. Basically, it focuses on rules and it's a practical operational component. So um, you could, I, I like to think of governing principle as your umbrella at the top and then your allocation criteria as your details. Now, both are, um, both are, are important for decision making, but they just operate at different levels, right? One is granular, one is big level, but they can't contradict each other as well. So we started with governing principles, talking about allocation criteria. We know that the allocation criteria needs to ladder back up to the governing principles, right? Because that's what's guiding you um, in, in the actual uh, use of the indicators under the allocation criteria. Now, in the discussions that we've had actually over the past couple of days, I think it's really, um, th this slide is actually quite uh, important to call out in the sense that in the discussions as a sub subgroup, we really do recognize that there are different uh, perspectives and lenses and components to that are really important to remember. The first and foremost is that we need to respect the amount of work that has already been done by countries in their preventative campaign applications. We need to acknowledge that there's challenges and competing priorities within your countries and try to simplify this uh, allocation process as much as possible to leverage inputs that already exist. We have heard that the process is, it can be long, it's heavy. We don't want to create more work on top of that. You've done your application and then you're going to have to do more on top of that to get allocated doses. That is is not the intention and it's really respecting the work that has been put in so far. Um, also recognizing that uh, when deciding what allocation criteria to use, we're looking at um, greatest need, but it's challenging to compare country specific contexts at different levels because we know that there's different levels and quality of information available, right? So how do you select a criteria and indicator where uh, some, some countries might have the data? Some might not, but at the end of the day, you do need an indicator and something to do the calculation, but you do recognize that there's data quality issues, data availability, uh, capacity issues. So we are very conscious of that as well. We're not going to create something that is impossible uh, to calculate, but at the same time, you do need something to actually use in the calculation itself. And lastly, the SAF or the supply allocation framework is to allocate available doses. It's not to assess the merit and robustness of your preventative campaign application because this is done upstream in the process. So this is not a quality check on your application. This is really saying you've been approved. Okay, well, how do we allocate you doses now, right? So the framework is not, um, it's not assessing the merit or robustness of the application itself.
So with the subgroup, when we were looking at what allocation criteria indicators to use, we we kind of looked at, we try to use this schema of a logical framework, logical steps to determine what criteria. And there, it's quite simple. We said, one, does a potential indicator, does it map back to the governing principles? Two, is it numerically quantifiable? If it's quantifiable, can we put a scale to it? You score one if you have this, you score two if you have that, you score three if you have that. Or if it's not uh, quantifiable, it's not a quant, uh, a quant uh, data point, can you answer it yes or no? If it, you can answer it yes or no, maybe you score one uh, if it's yes, and you score zero if it's no, right? And then at the end of the day, does the question we ask, does the data exist and is it readily available? Back to the respecting the work that's already been done, really want to create an indicator of which data is readily available and no need to actually do any recalculations or go back to country to ask for, oh, can you give us this information? Give us this information. You have enough on your plates. This is really to leverage the data that's already in your applications itself. So what you see here, this is not the actual, um, the, the SAF yet, but it is a, what I like to call a straw person of, to conceptually understand what are the different components actually in the allocation, um, the allocation calculation. So just to, to, to take a step back, what are we trying to do? You basically have a pool of doses and you want to divvy up those doses amongst uh, the, the, the uh, divvy them up amongst countries. So I like to think of it in terms of a really simple analogy. If I were to give my son and his cousins uh, a plate of cookies, right? Um, how do they divide those cookies amongst themselves? And more importantly, how do I explain why my son, Xander, got three cookies and his cousin, Evie, got two and a half cookies, right? To actually be able to explain the logic of how you actually allocated uh, that plate of cookies itself, or in this case, the doses. So when you look here, this straw person here, you can see that there are three main categories of indicators, right? Where the first category is a needs basis or a burden of disease or the epi data um, Epi data indicator. The middle column would be looking at uh, feasibility, maximizing the impact of OCV doses. And then the third category of indicators there is to capture country context. Now, those three components are would be all the indicators would have three categories. You have indicators underneath, and you can see beside each indicator, there's a ranking scale, right? Where you could have indicator one, if you have zero for that indicator, for example, if it says, if your PAMI, um, if your incidence rates for your PAMIs identified in year one of your application is uh, above a certain median, a certain threshold, you would score a score of two. If it's below, you'd score a score of one. So that's the logic of how we're trying to build the indicators that the indicators have are under a category and then you have a point scale underneath. So trying to keep it as simple as possible. Now, and then, uh, so I'm just gonna do this. So that's the kind of how the components of the allocation would work together. What does that actual mean? At the end of the day, we're actually trying to do a calculation. So if this is trying to illustrate at the top, say we had um, a case where we had three countries, right? And the table at the top is their different data points that you would pull from their application, pull from their prioritization tool, pull from their PAMI uh, analysis. And under each one of the indicators, those are the data points. And using the scoring scale that I spoke about, you would then translate that over to the table at the bottom where you scored between zero and three um, under each one of those indicators. And and under each one of those indicators, you have a score for each country. And then you cross at it, you have a score per country. And then you would then find the weighting uh, that your country had versus the total pool. And then you have a percentage. So that's your di division of the, the pie of the plate of cookies that you apply against the number of doses available. So really simple in theory, but that's kind of conceptually how you translate the indicators um, down into an actual calculation of how do you divvy up um, the doses itself. Now. Uh, as I said, we try. We did run a workshop at the on Wednesday, not Monday, um, with a, a, a smaller group of the sub team members. And actually, I'm going to invite uh, Amanda to uh, help uh, uh, give us feedback on how that workshop went, and what did we find actually when people actually tried to run a calculation. <laughs> 